G'day Sam, John Day here. Um, I'm assuming you're all good to go for Blue Dice 3 Yeah, haven't uh, done contact yet, but um, probably the the timing of it was not too bad. Obviously missed uh, the second one and then had that extra week, so had a bit of extra time to, to take it slowly and um, been training fully, so um, just need some of the boys to, to tackle really and uh, hopefully get through that. So that'll happen tomorrow, I assume? Yeah, yeah. Um, normally have a bit of contact on on Tuesday, so we'll have our, our um, some scrum stuff too and some more stuff. So get through that, then hopefully it'll be available. And what was it like watching Bledisloe too, especially when Dane was mixing things up after about a minute and a half? Yeah, it's it's always uh, interesting when you're running water. Um, there's always a few um, you know funny things that you see, and uh, it was awesome to see Dane out there leading from the front uh, as he always does. Dane, um, you know, you've been through all your injury problems and all that. You know, missed a whole season pretty much. Are you enjoying kind of the second sort of lease on life that you're having in your rugby career? Yeah, yes, but yeah, mate, it's all good. Eh? Um, Any time you're in the All Black environment is uh, pretty special. So, yeah, taking it week by week, but body's feeling good um, and got through. But, yeah, just cherishing the moment, these moments in the, in the black jersey. So it's, it's cool to be running around. And um, Australia are kind of um, talking up home advantage for them. Dane uh, saying they're back on their ground. You know, they win two, they get the bleeders low. But Sydney, I think the last three times you guys have won by at least 20 points. So going to Sydney, is it that daunting? Yeah, I don't think we have a great record. Obviously, the last three occasions have been pretty good, but we don't really have a great record win ratio over here in Australia. I think it's maybe like 58%. So they do turn up. Um, on their home turf, so we're expecting a big battle, mate. Um, yeah, so it's going to be, um, I think, the intensity will probably raise from Eden Park. There's a, there's a huge on, uh, huge stuff on the outcome. So, yeah, um, previous results don't really count. Um, they'll be up for it, and we've got to match that and and, and make sure we turn up again. Cool. Cheers. Hi, Dane. Following on from that, I mean, while there may not necessarily be too much in, you know, which ground you play on, for example, in Sydney, but is there something around, you know, playing in that city, uh, you know, that the way you go about travelling around that city and, and going to the stadium, is there something around it that makes it more favourable maybe than, than some of um, Australia's other venues? Oh, I'm not sure, mate. Like, to be fair, on the bus ride or stuff like that, it's like when you're preparing for a match, you don't really think of, like, those little things like that. Um and I suppose when we've played it, it's always been the I think the, probably the first game of the of the series as well. So it's a different it's a different circumstance being over here after you know playing them twice in New Zealand and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I don't I can't really put my finger on it, but um, yeah, we don't r worry too much about the you know how we get there and stuff like that. It's just b best preparing the way we can. And like I said, I think the us having not a great success rate in Australia is um, making sure we we prepare really well to give us a chance for for Saturday. And a question for either of you, you've both obviously travelled um, and played in Oz, you know, so many times over the years. Is there a significantly different feel just around, you know, um, what you're able to do this time? And, and how different is it because of the, you know, the, the current situation? Uh, I think um, for myself, the one thing I did notice, obviously, the, the airport was completely different to what we've, we've experienced in the past. Um, you know, it was a, a pretty sombre, um, you know, not a lot of people talking a lot, everyone was kind of just keeping their distance like they were meant to and um, that was definitely a, a little bit different but we haven't been here that long yet and um, we just had a, a quick gym session there and review so we haven't actually been out and about too much but we'll get to experience uh, what the new normal is over here um, in the next couple of days but um, we'll be making sure we're doing everything we're, we're meant to be doing and hopefully doing nothing that we're not meant to be. And one last one from me, Sam. Again, you, you obviously prefer to be playing, but uh, watching on on Bledisloe Two, what did you make of um, of Tupo's um, opportunity? Yeah, it's it's uh, one of those ones. I, th I think you ask every rugby player; they'd rather be out there playing. Um, but but I think all the locks went really well. Um, Tupo's was good. He got out there and um, probably just you know enjoyed playing. He had the the experience of his first one, and um, it's always nice when you. You get that second one. Um, I thought Paddy was good too. He's big and strong and physical. And I thought Scoot um, did really well too when he came on. He, he brought that energy and um, just did what, what Scooter loves doing, getting off the ground quick and, and carrying hard when he had that opportunity. Cheers, guys. Thank you.
Hey okay. guys, uh, Elliot from News Talk ZB. Um, I've seen you wearing on Instagram masks and that when you're going to and from location. So is it a bit more restrictive over there than what you've been used to here in New Zealand? Yeah, it's a little bit different, mate. Probably don't have that, I suppose, freedom of being back at home. But yeah, it's just little things like bus rides. Um, obviously at the airport we have to wear them and stuff like that. So there's a lot of, or not a lot, but just a few protocols in place that we have to abide by, which is fair enough. And just do our part to make sure this tournament um, you know, continues on. So, yeah, I suppose it's a small little sacrifice to pay to, for the bigger picture. Yeah, and obviously, you're used to being mobbed at airports, you know, the, the All Black brand being so strong around the world. And, and wherever you go, perhaps around Sydney with the expats, that, that'll be different, I'm guessing, this time as well. Yeah, Bodhi didn't have a queue up at the airport. People asking for signatures and stuff like that. So me and Sammy are the ones that no one really wants to talk to anyway, so we were fine. But yeah, very different, right? Uh, like as Sammy said, being at the airport, like, yeah it, was, yeah, it was this weird feeling. Obviously no one around, all the shops closed and I suppose being a little bit more isolated um, away from the fans and stuff like that will be a bit different. But yeah, I suppose the best way we can represent our fans and, and our families is go out and, and, and perform and, and do a good job there so they can take satisfaction out of that and maybe a few... Um, waves in the crowd after the game, stuff like that, so, yeah. Did, uh, did you guys happen to, to watch the NRL final last night? Did you get together as a team? Yeah, we uh, we watched it in the, the team room, um, and then a few of the boys snuck off early. Um, I watched the rest of it in, in my room, and, you know, it was, it was pretty awesome to see, you know, two great teams going out there and, and um, you know, putting out there how good they are. I think if you look at the Storm, um, you know, Cam Smith controlled the game really well in the, the first half, but then uh, Parramatta obviously just come back with that youth and um, put them under massive pressure. It would have been interesting if there's another three minutes to go. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. Any other questions, Dean? Uh, yeah, I've got one um, for Dane. Um, can you just give us an idea Oh, probably the physicality to be fair. Um, like we took a bit of a punch on the nose in that first game, um, and they dictated a lot of the a lot of the game around our physicality. So we we knew that was probably a big step up, or we needed to make a massive step up in that department and and come out with you know some good intent. And um, we did that at times, but um, we've still got a lot to improve in our game and, and get better at. So I think we know what it looks like, but uh, we still need to, I suppose, raise the bat a bit more. And I'm sure Aussie will be doing the same. Is it, as sort of, as yourself, someone you could call an old statesman of the team, um, is it up to you or is it also up to the younger guys? Do you think you encourage the younger guys to go and put some better too? Given it's a test match and it might seem I don't know how far to push the boundaries, how's that work? Oh, I suppose it's up for probably the older guys to drive that as well, but um, being smart around that, um, and it's not about going out and being an idiot. It's just making you know making sure you stick to your cleans and your tackles and stuff like that, and you know, making sure those young guys. I, I suppose if they see us kind of doing it, that we want them to follow. That's the biggest thing we can do as leaders is lead by actions, and the rest of the young boys will um, be right behind us. So yeah, it's a bit of both, mate. Uh, having a chat, but making sure we do it at training as well, and and turn up and train hard. Just one last one from me, Dane, or just even both you guys. I mean, we ask this to you every year, but do you have to re emphasize to the young guys what the quick play part means? Perhaps my generation is looking at a big field, but I don't know how the younger set does. How do you work your way around that? Yeah, to answer your question um, pretty bluntly, yeah, you, you do have to explain, um, you know, where the names come from, how long it's been around, um, the you know, the, the history of it, um, because um, if you don't know, you, you just don't know. And I know that was the, you know, where I first came into the environment and speaking for Dane as well, he would have been the same. Unless you had been told or taken a great interest in it when you were at school, um, you just don't know. So it's uh, it's on our, our shoulders to make sure that we upskill the, the younger boys so they know um, where it's come from, um, why it's been around for such a long time and, 
and the history that goes with it, the the good history for us as All Blacks, but also the the tough history to to look at. So um, you've just got to layer that in. You, you can't bombard um, the young guys with too much info. It, it's drip through, drip fed in um, throughout the weeks. Uh, a question for either of you, um, Caleb Clark was like his performance was obviously a real talking point after the second test. Um, I just wondered sort of how he's how he's handled it since. You know, did he just kind of roll with it? Is he pretty cruisy? And you, you know, you expect him, I guess, to back it up on on Saturday. Yeah, he's a pretty um, relaxed character. I think he was dancing in the gym this morning, so. Yeah, he's a pretty happy, oh, he's probably a happy, really yeah. happy person. Um, but he's got, the, I suppose, the ability to flick the switch when it comes to game time. So yeah, I think, yeah, the challenge for him is is to back it up, which is we're really hoping he can do something like that again. And But he's a really good kid. He's got, he's, he's he comes from a great family. Obviously, his old, his old man was an All Black. Uh, Ronnie was a bit of a legend. So, yeah, I think he, he's probably got a little bit of insight to how the All Blacks, you know, are. And But, you know, from what we've seen... The start of the year, he's a really good kid that's willing to learn and um, just always happy and singing and <laughs> dancing and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's quite refreshing to see a young fella keep his feet on the ground. I imagine that he'll come in for, um, you know, quite a bit of extra attention, I guess, from the Wallabies, given the damage that he did. But, you know, physically, he looks like he can sort of handle anything that's thrown at him. Is that the case? Yeah, he's a, he's a big, strong man. Um don't know his numbers exactly, but you know he's uh, he's impressive to watch um, when he's when he's running around there on the field and um, you know played him Super Rugby. He's a bit of a nightmare to try tackle. So hopefully, as Colsey said, he takes on that form into uh, the next couple of weeks. And, and just one last one for me. I guess you know um, the Wallabies need to win on Saturday to keep the series, the Bledisloe Cup series, alive. You know, what are you? expecting from them, uh, I guess, you know, desperation, I suppose. You know, they want to at least take it to that fourth game. Oh, bloody hope so, <laughs> from their perspective. Um, I'm sure they will. Like, we, we've played the Wallabies a huge amount of times and they always turn up. And um, like the reporter said before, being on home turf um, will mean a lot to them being home in front of the first time in front of their fans. So we're expecting another massive battle and I'm sure it's going to be intensive arrays from from Eden Park and um, both you know both teams will be very keen to to perform so yeah we're, we're preparing for a, for a massive one hey. Hey, another one uh, for you I know you've been quite outspoken on music and stuff in and around the changing rooms and dressing rooms uh, in, in years gone by Caleb has um, mentioned a couple of weeks ago that he's still a bit of a Disney fan being a kid is he allowed anywhere near the uh, music committee at the moment? Yeah, she is on the music yeah. committee. Um, I think there's four of them on it. And he, he went and brought a stereo because he got a bit of a rack up because they didn't play music once on the bus. So <laughs> they've been proactive. But Disney, oh, I don't know. Colsey well, knows a few of the Disney <laughs> songs for his kids. So kids. I'm sure if one's put on, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll listen. But if it's on repeat, I'm sure some boys will politely ask <laughs> it to be uh, next. But... Um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But it's been good. The music had a bit of variety, um, so it's been um, well received. And uh, Colsey, a bit more of a serious one as well. We've heard um, the coaches mention the uniqueness of playing the same opponent four times in a row. Now you are still potentially in line to, to play all four games against them. Is it is it a you know a strange and a, and a very different sort of mentality and process, almost like a game of chess that you're getting more moves against each other four times in a row? Yeah, I suppose that's probably a good uh, way of putting it. Um, like, and it's and it, ma it makes it more unique. With obviously because we haven't really played too much footy this year with international, so it's probably it's been more gratitude that we actually get to do that as well. So, um, but yeah, every game's different. Like, everyone's teams are trying to work themselves out and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so I think every game will be very different. And we've seen that with the first game to the second game. So I'm, I'm sure this will be, uh, I suppose. Uh, a different one as well and throw out things that we haven't seen and, and stuff like that so it's cool mate we're really enjoying the the challenge of it and uh looking forward to to getting into it on saturday